Okay, guys. <coughs> uh, look, uh, I've had uh, some requests to show you how to build this fire piston. So, anyway, I put your uh, list of materials on Dave's site under uh, discussion uh, fire starters. So, uh, if you've gone to Lowe's and you've picked up your material, uh, I'm going to show you how to put those material together. First thing we're going to start with is the uh, cylinder itself, and uh, so I'm going to pull this uh, piston out. Now this cylinder is a uh, one half inch stub out copper. You notice it has a uh, a rounded closed end on it, and these usually come in uh, six to eight inches long. So uh, what I did is I cut off uh, the top half of the cylinder and uh, I left the cylinder uh, four and a half inches long. Uh, they usually work pretty good so between four and a half and uh, five inches long. Uh, but I prefer the, uh, the shorter the better. But if you get it too short then you won't have enough volume of air in there to uh, to compress so I like to keep it about four and a half inches what I did was I sawed it off with a hacksaw and I, uh, I took a pocket knife and once I did that I cut the rough edges off uh, it, you use kind of like at an angle and uh, smoothed out the edges gave it a little bit of an inside bevel so it make it easier for the uh, the o-ring to slip in and uh, once I did that I'm through with the cylinder so I'm going to set the cylinder here and uh, that was real easy because I didn't have to close it in or or anything and that that's real quick and uh, and I can get right down to work on the uh, on the piston so uh, I'm going to show you how to do this piston. I hope you can see this. But uh, anyway, what I did was I took a pocket knife. I'm going to try to bring this uh, o ring down so you can see what I've done. If I don't stick this thing in my finger. Once you get them in that groove, sometimes they're a little bit hard to, to get out. But uh, Especially when you got got grease on them, uh, probably be better with a with a little pocket knife for a, a letter opener. I don't stab myself. Uh, uh, excuse me for that, but uh, I'll get my little letter opener here and. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's about the right size for uh, a pocket knife you need to use uh, to cut this uh, notch out with. Try not to cut that o-ring when you when you're removing it. I like to slide it down so you can see. You can tell I'm having a little bit. Of there we go. Now, I'm really taking up too much time to do this, but uh, I, I posted a video yesterday, but uh, they rejected it on YouTube uh, because it was too long. So I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes here. So the first thing I did was I took the rod, which was about three feet long, and uh, I cut this notch out right here with a pocket knife. I just started by making a a, uh, a ring around the edge about a quarter inch down from the from the end and I made it uh, probably about a quarter inch wide and I just started going around and and cutting that out as I went around the tube and I got it nice and smooth I took a little file and uh, I filed that out an easy way to do this would be to uh, cut the cut the piston off, put it in a, a half inch drill, 
turn the drill on and hold a, a hacksaw up to it, but you have to be careful not to go too far. Anyway, then once I did that, I started in the middle of the end right here, and I just kind of spun my pocket knife like this, and then I started cutting the end out. And the reason I did it with a pocket knife is because I could control where where the the uh, hole was centered in the in the tube, so it didn't go too close to the sides either way. So I prefer doing it with a pocket knife. You can do it with a drill bit or all or what other, but I'm used to working with a pocket knife. Anyway, so what I did was once I did that, I would put the O-ring down in the uh, groove, in the notch there, and I would check the fit. And if it, it went in there okay, without being too tight or too loose, uh, then I would, I would uh, stop cutting the notch. Uh, I wouldn't cut it any deeper. In other words, I'd cut it just deep enough to where the, the uh, O-ring would fit in there without going too, too, uh, too far down. But it would fit in there just fine. I could get it to go in there without too much trouble. So uh, once I did that, <clears throat> I removed the O-ring off of the uh, shaft, and I took the old the. Uh, let me take this top off so you can see what I've done with the top. There we go. Anyway, and I got to, and I, I took the piston and I put it all the way down to the bottom as far as it would go. Just shut it in there as far as it would go. And uh, once I did that, you can see how it goes right even with the uh, top there. And I cut it off just like that. And uh, if you if you notice this little round in right here. Uh, the down only goes uh, that far down. So you really don't have to worry about uh, making a space between the bottom and the piston because you've already got a nice little air pocket right here on the bottom. Uh, that's why I like using these stub outs because they're real easy. You don't have to go to any extra trouble. So uh, once I put that in there, marked it, cut it off, I was ready to put my uh, handle on it and I uh, took a drill bit and I drilled a hole uh, in the end and the knob that I bought from Lowe's already had a little hole in the, in the end of the knob where you could take the screw and screw it about halfway into the knob then I cut the head of the wood screw off right here so I could place it in this hole right here and screw it down a little at a time until I